Hey guys, I was just going to start making some videos here about uh, some gunsmithing stuff. I've been uh, doing gunsmithing stuff for about six, seven years. I used to work uh, quite a bit in a, in a full, couple of full-blown gunsmith shops. I worked for a couple of master gunsmiths and I kind of learned quite a bit from them. I don't do it professionally, um, although I probably could, but it's just one of those things that I got into and I I kind of learned learned about it and and what what you did and and how to do it and decided that it wasn't really for me. So um, as of right now, I'm a full-time grad student. Um, but on the side, you're not really on the side, but for a hobby, I like uh, messing around with you know, guns and stuff. And I don't have a bunch of time right now to be working on this stuff. Um, I start my classes again here in a couple days, so I'm just making a video here. Um, to kind of for some precursors for some other videos. Um, as I go along here, um, today I'm going to be doing a little block for a um, just like a, you can lay barrels in them. Um, they they sell them on like a bunch of the popular uh, gun sites. They're just they're usually round uh, plastic blocks, and they have a groove cut them in cut in them in a bunch of holes so you can lay a barrel across there um, if you need to knock some sights or pins out or doing firing pin work or all that good stuff. So I'm going to I'm gonna start to make one here today. I don't know how far I'm going to get on it. I, this is a, a chunk that I had left over uh, from another project and I, I chucked it up in the lathe one day and I was going to turn it around but I, as you can see it, it uh, I didn't have it straight uh, or flush in the lathe and I just said screw it so that's about all the further I just made a light cut on it but it all, you know, they don't need to be round. Most of them are round. I don't know why. Maybe for space or something, but this will work fine. This is the same material. They're usually white or black. This is the same stuff. Um, and then, uh, if you watched my other video I posted the other day, this is that receiver block that I made, and I just finished it up. I was just going to show you. Um, here's my bolts that I put in there, and the front and the back. So, um, when I do it, put it on my vise here, I can clamp it into my T-slot and then these these will clamp onto the T's. And I have this all indexed so these bolts are exactly centered um, and then the receiver is exactly centered in this bar stock. So when I bolt this thing onto my table it's going to be perfectly parallel so I can do all my machining work and, and not have to worry about, um, you know, is the front or the back going to be uh, in or out a few thousands or whatever. So I measured it several times and if you watch my other video you kind of see uh, some of the steps that go into making it. And I still made my plate there but I uh, have a piece of aluminum that I'm going to make here one of these days. So anyways what my plans are in the next um, I don't know probably over maybe a year or so. Uh, I got my little mill here, my little rust knock and this thing is it's tiny, it's not really set up for doing gunsmithing work, but it's, um, it works good for doing little receiver stuff, and it's just borderline big enough to do the stuff that I want to do. And um, if I had room um, in space, this is just in the basement of my house, if I had uh, room in space and a bigger garage, I'd probably get a big knee mill, but um, I don't really want to spend the money and I don't want to move it around right now because we'll probably be moving here in about three four years. So. So I got this little guy, and it's working great. Uh, in a few days, I'm going to be going and picking up, well, not a few days, uh, this weekend, hopefully, I'm going to be going picking up another lathe. It'll be my fourth lathe. Um, I've had two other ones. I've had two South Bends, and a, and a, and a Logan was the last one I had. Um, South Bend's really nice. Logan's really nice, but they weren't big enough for the type of stuff I wanted to do. The one I'm getting, which I'll make a video for it, is an 11 by 36 um, and they, I'm going to have to go through the whole thing because I don't trust it right now. It's an old lathe that's from the 50s and it's been, you know, used and abused. So I'll go through it and try and make some videos on, on that and, and getting it set up for doing gunsmithing stuff. The nice thing about that lathe is that it has a 1 and 3 8 inch spindle bore, which allows me to run the barrel all the way through the headstock. And it also has a 36 inch bed, so if I want to if I ever wanted to 
chamber or work on a barrel on a steady rest, which is the way I initially learned how to do it, um, that can be done too. The nice thing about that large spindle bore, uh, like I said, is you can do your barrel work up front by the head stock and then if you want to spin a barrel, um, you know, grind it down, smooth it out, whatever, you can run it between centers and there's plenty of, plenty of uh, center, center to center room to do that. Um, the longest barrel I've ever done is 30 inches, so I know some guys have gone up to like 32 and then some crazy guys doing some insane long range stuff. You know, not including like 50 cals or 416s, but shy techs, but um, like some crazy guys do like 36 inch barrels and they're just, they're set up and they're way, they like to do like one and two mile shots and it's just insane, but, but I'll never be doing that. 30 inch I think will be my max and so this lathe that I'm going to be getting is going to be just perfect for it. Um, so yeah, let's get, uh, let's get to rolling here and, and we'll start milling this little block out. Alrighty, so what I got set up here is I got both my cameras going, so hopefully I can give you a couple different angles of this. But what I did here was I got my uh, tilting clamp here, and I got it set at 45 degrees, and I might move this camera here. Um, I got it set at 45 degrees. Alrighty, so I got my cameras repositioned here, and what I want to do here is I want to make a, like, a 45 degree V in the middle of this block here. Uh, being that I don't have a 45 degree little uh, router bit or end mill, I just got a square half inch end mill here. And what I'm going to do is I kind of want to get it in the center here, so we'll, I'm just going to eyeball it. This thing isn't supposed, it's not going to be perfect. I don't, uh, you know, this isn't precision work with this particular piece. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to eyeball it here a little bit. I could set it up and measure it and and get it exactly, you know, perfect, but we're just going to put a small little, you know, we're going to take, we're going to try and go in the center line of, of this end mill. Here, I'll grab another one. See this end mill here? Get in front of the camera. I'm going to try and just hit the center of that end mill and then wherever it ends up on the edge, that's gonna be my 45 degree V. So I'm gonna, like my other videos, if you watch them, I run a vacuum because I don't like crap flying everywhere. So I'm gonna get my vacuum, I'm gonna start this thing up, and then I think I got it pretty close to where I want it. Might go in a little deeper there. Back out, and I'll just test it here. And uh, pretty close to where I want to be. I'll just go in a little bit more. So I'll just start cutting here and we'll, we'll get going. Lock, there's a lock, lock my bed down. So here's one of the little limitations of my machine is that I only got so much travel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my stop up here. You can hopefully see it on that video. I'll just double check. Yep. I'm going to bring my stop up. And this thing has a little tiny bit of dirt grease in it yet so I'm still working on getting it cleaned up the way to where I want it to work bottom one's working better. So I got the quill locked here and I'm just going to bring this up to, to return back to where I was. So there I'm stopped and lock my quill, bring it up. Get that piece 
piece out of there. That don't matter. There we go. So I'm just going to loosen this guy up. Bring my table back. Slide him forward. Bring him back down. Continue cutting. If I was doing metal and this was a precision piece, I probably wouldn't do that because that's not really the best way to do it. But like I said, this isn't precision, so it's just uh, it's going to get pounded and beat down anyways. So. that cut finished. And I got a nice little 45 there if you can see it. I'll, I'll crank this out a little more again. I'll move this guy a little bit that way. There we go. So you can see we got a nice 45 there and it's it's okay. So I lost my other camera so we'll just uh, go with this guy. But what I'm gonna do I think is drop this guy down a little bit more and I think I'm going to go all the way out to the edge of my flute, or the edge of my end mill here. And that'll give me a nice deep, nice deep edge. Alright. Being that I moved this piece over, remember last time I ran out of room here, but now that I moved it over, I have plenty of room here. I should have did this in the first place. I have plenty of room here to start, back out a little bit. And then I'll run this one more time through here. for the kids to play with. That's a joke. That's garbage. So let's crank back. I'll bring the quill up here and take a look at her cut now. So now that's more looking like how I have the size that I want it. And we could go bigger. I just have to go down and then to get, you know, this uh, vertical edge is going to go as high as my flutes are. And my flutes are about an inch tall. But I don't need to go that tall or that deep, I'm sorry. And if I wanted to go taller this way, being that I this thing is not a swivel, I can only slant it one way. I can make this cut, and then if I got a ridge here, I'll just crank my table over this way, and then I'll come back and mill that ridge off. So I can make this thing, you know, as deep as I want it, but this is gonna work out just great for me. Most barrels are, um, you know, an inch and a quarter on the chamber end and anywhere from three quarter to down to um, four hundredths or so on the on the uh, muzzle end and that's about six hundredths so my four hundredths barrel or even my half inch barrel will fit right in the middle of these slots so that's about perfect that's where I want it um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to see, I don't know, I don't think I have quite enough room to flip it around the other way, but I'm going to check it out and see if I can flip this thing for, uh, 90 degrees and go this way, which I can already see that I'm not going to be able to do that. And I don't have a bandsaw here, um, and I don't feel like cutting this by hand. So if I wanted to, I could put it in this way, and I'd... And I probably will do this eventually here. I'll, I'll cut a good inch, inch and a half off here, and I'll put it in this way, and then I'll, I'll cut another um, either deep o deeper, I don't know if I'll go deeper, but maybe one a little shallower so I can get some uh, smaller things in. So that takes care of my 45 degree cut, and I'm, I'm about in the center. I, I didn't measure it. I just kind of guessed. Um, the only reason you kind of want to be in the center is so when you do you know, when you put your piece in there, this is a, oops, I suppose I better put it on camera here. When you put your piece in your little block here, say this is a barrel, I don't have a barrel handy, but 
So that's my barrel. And then I, uh, there it is. So I got a bolt. There's my bolt. Turn it this way so it sits in there nice. So it's sitting in there. So when, I, when I'm pounding on this or whatever I'm doing, drifting or whatever, I'm kind of pounding in the center of this block because if I was out here, you know, it'd be kind of wobbly and I'd be whatever. But So there we got it kind of centered up. So that's great. What I'm going to do now, I think, and I don't know if I'm going to, I might do it on here. I'm just going to drill some random holes in here. I'll probably pop one right in the middle here in this groove and of various sizes because sometimes you do like firing pins, these come in handy for, um, let me grab a pin here quick and I'll show you. Here's a firing pin out of a, out of a random rifle. So I'll show you here when I'm done, but you use these to, you know, you can push down, push your spring down, get spring tension on them if you want to, then you're not you know, marring this up or putting dents in your bench or whatever, but we'll get to cutting here or cutting some holes and and show you what we did after we're done here. So on this little rust knock milling machine there's a little pin right here. You probably can't see it very well, but it's a it's a pin on a tension or a retention ball bearing in there. And I got this marked up because it's kind of a pain. You push that pin up and that locks your Locks your uh, pulley. So then you got to get the old wrench out here. And my wrench, I got to get a few new ones. This one isn't quite big enough. But if I squeeze it on there, it works. And then there we go. So here's our little collet system. Sorry. So that takes that little nut there that holds the collet on, and here's your little. DA100 collets. That's your little bit of choice. And I always clean the stuff off when I'm done, but I'm doing this video, so I'll clean this off here in a bit. Clean this guy off. So you don't want none of that crap getting inside your thing there, inside your um, spindle. Alright, and I have several, that's the only bad thing about this little mill is you need several different size collets. And I have four of the handiest ones I have here. And this, I'm going to put in here, this is a quarter inch, quarter inch drill bit. And I should measure my firing pin here because that's probably what most of my stuff is going to be done on this little block here. So I'll get this guy out, measure the diameter, and it's 200 thousandths. So a quarter inch would be perfect for putting this guy in there, and then I'll still have plenty of room for this shoulder. I'm just starting to get this stuff set up here because I've, uh, we moved here in January and it's now August and I haven't, I literally have not had time to do much of anything for this stuff, so I'm still getting slowly getting some of my stuff set up here. I had it almost all the way through there, so there we go. So there's my hole. Put my firing pin in there. There we go, I can use it just like that. Alrighty, now I got a half inch bit in there and we'll drill a half inch hole off to the side here. There we go, three eighths. So we'll set this guy up again and we'll drill another hole. So now I've drilled a few holes in there, and I got a, I got a half, three eighths, and a quarter inch, and I might drill some more in there. Um, like I said, I'm gonna probably cut. Well, now that I put these holes here, I'll cut a half off here and maybe three quarters off here when I get uh, around to it. I a really sharp wood chisel. Clean them holes up a little bit.
I'm going to clean this stuff up too because that's kind of annoying. Alrighty. Sorry if you couldn't see some of that, but anyways, I got my, my three holes drilled, and like I said, I might put a couple more in there depending on if I ever need to do some more stuff, but this is going to be everything that I need it for, for now. Um, so yeah, there's a cheap, I bought this at a surplus, this hunk of wood, or a hunk of plastic, um, a couple hunks of it, they sold it by the pound, it was like two bucks a pound, so... Uh, this is about a pound, maybe two, so for about three bucks and a little bit of time on your milling machine you got a nice little uh, uh, block that won't mar the finish on any rifle barrel or anything and and uh, it works extremely handy. I don't know what they sell those little blocks for online, but I know they're 20, 30 bucks, something like that. Um, I didn't want to spend 20, 30 bucks when I can make one myself for basically you know something similar and then if I also if I if I get another hunk like this if I ever wanted to um, clamp this in a vise I could make another piece and clamp this and I could clamp it in a barrel or uh, in a bench vise and I could have a good hold on my barrel so there's all sorts of stuff you can do with this it's good for pounding out um, I might ma machine out a little square in the bottom here uh, so I can uh, run punch drifts out or it's not drifts, but uh, drift sights out, and I might actually do that right now. Let's actually let's set up and do that right now because I got everything set up and better time than the present. So I think I'm just going to I don't know, maybe go an inch or so in the end here because when you're punching stuff out, it's usually going to be you know on the end of a barrel. So I might drill, I might machine out pretty deep hunk. I think those uh, most front sights when, that are dovetailed in anyways, that's what I'm going to be working on here. Uh, most of them are, I don't know, three quarters of an inch or so to get them out of that dovetail. Most of them aren't that big. So I'll just start on my 45 here and I will I'll mill in and I'll mill, I'll mill towards me and then I'll mill, si mill side to side a little bit and, and we'll get, um, we'll get a nice little hunk out there for us to drift sights with. That's how deep I'm going to go.
Alrighty, so we'll take this out. Looks alright to me. I cleaned up here a little with my fancy file. Not my file, but my wood chisel. Could use a razor blade just as easily, but I didn't want to run and find it. Sorry, I'll try and keep keep it in the camera here. This isn't rocket science, I'm just cleaning it up a little. So there we go, now I got a little notch. Here's the front sight on a Winchester 1890, as you can see they're a little dovetailed. So what I can do now is I can set that in there close to the edge and I can drift that thing out of there. Or if I wanted it to go the other way, I think they usually say left to right, but so there, now I can drift that guy out of there. And if I want to, I can clamp this into something, and and there we go. So yeah, there's my little, my version of a little um, gunsmithing block. If you like this video, check out my other videos, and be sure to subscribe.